Next up, a new documentary that's shining a light on one of the darkest corners of America, sex trafficking of children. It's a topic that hits close to home after a low man was convicted yesterday of drugging a 13-year-old girl, raping her and forcing her into prostitution. Two weeks before that, five others were arrested in connection with trafficking women at brothels around Boston. I Am Jane Doe takes a broader look, portraying a labyrinth of horror after gut-wrenching horror, brought to us by the likes of online classified site Backpage.com, which marketed children as escorts. This is the United States. There's no possible way this is true. I sent her out with one of her friends, and she didn't come back. Next thing you know, boom. She brought her into a life of hell. It's like shopping on Amazon. You're just a product. The film follows epic courtroom battles, congressional hearings, and some of the remarkable young women and their mothers who've survived it all. It's the latest work from former lawyer, Olympic rower, and current award-winning filmmaker, Mary Mazio. Mary joins me now. Congratulations, Mary. Thank you, my friend. Good you know, to that, be here. I don't even know who that guy is, but the guy who said, this is the United States, there is no possible way this is true. It's exactly what I thought, isn't it? Did you not think the same thing I before you too. started this? I'm embarrassed by what I didn't know about this crime. And it wasn't until I read an article in the Boston Globe about Jane Doe number one, Jane Doe number two, and Jane Doe number three. Ten minutes from where you live, ten minutes from where I live, and they sued Backpage and the Village Voice for injuries by virtue of being bought and sold online. How big? Are they, how big? Are, I know there were no precise numbers, obviously, but what's your sense of how big this problem so, is? So, so before I started, I thought it would be like a kid here or there. That's you know, what you I hear too. a kid ends up in a dumpster mm. or at the port authority. Um, we're talking hundreds of thousands of children on an annual basis. In the United States of America. In the United States alone. And it's sort of the greatest secret that nobody knows about. It's really extraordinary. You know, speaking of secret, Backpage.com to me before I, well, I had read about it a little bit and then I saw your piece. Click away, baby. It was like buy a bicycle kind of thing. I mean, they're essentially pimps. I mean, they, that, they are, it's not unfair. That's what they do, right? It is extraordinary what they've been able to do under color of law. And uh, the Senate began investigating, uh, in the middle of our film, the Senate began investigating Backpage and online sex trafficking. And when you read the Senate report, it is chilling. Um, not only that Backpage knew children were on their site, but the callousness with which they disregarded that fact. You know, without giving people a headache, this Section 230 of the Communications <laughs> Decency Act, right. I mean, you were a big-time lawyer in your former life, I big know. Big time, but, baby. But you were, but, but uh, that is the issue, That that's the thing that the Backpages of the world hide behind, correct? Yeah, exactly. And what is the thing, and what's it, their argument? It basically provides that if you're a website, you're not responsible for third-party content. And this is special protection for websites. Um, you don't have it here with television, radio, old print. Old media doesn't have the benefit of it. But it was enacted actually back in a time when the Internet was just beginning and could not handle all this incoming data. And so it was really... They couldn't screen all the stuff that no. they were putting on their right. sites. It was for a legitimate purpose. Right. Now, fast forward 20 years, and you and I are tracked on a daily basis. Our online movements are tracked. And yet it is this broad shield of protection. And the First Circuit Court in Boston, in here, in Boston, ruled just a few weeks ago that even if Backpage had been a co-conspirator in the crime of child sex trafficking, had profited from, participated in. They're protected by They this. are protected by this statute. And the First Circuit said, we have this statute. And then, by the way, we have a federal criminal statute of trafficking. Guess who wins? Well, one of the problems you and advocates like you have is there are civil libertarians on the other side. Are there not who are saying this is a, this, I mean, I find free it, this is a free speech. You know, and you, you know what? They, many of them don't understand the legal basis for Section 230. We're not talking about the First Amendment. We're talking about a statute that simply says we get to dismiss your case at summary judgment. You don't have to spend a dime in legal fees. That's what we're talking about. You know, uh, of the things that are upsetting, and, and there are, they abound. Oh, in this, like, the, like the fact that the tech industry has aligned itself with Backpage in these cases? And why is Oh, because they, they want this statute to protect themselves. No, the thing that totally put me over the edge, uh -oh. because I've heard of this judge, this 
this Judge Posner, who I looked up to make sure it was the same guy, is the single most cited judge in the history of the United States of America, wins all these awards. Listen to him in this appellate argument in Chicago, right? In Chicago. Listen to this back and forth between this Judge Posner and a lawyer on the good side of things. Just listen to this. Look, the tone of this is so unprofessional. He talks about a violent industry. Is phone sex violent? The content of... Is phone sex violent? It can be. Really? It certainly can How? be. And what about also old people, old men, who would like to be seen with a young woman? That, that is an aspect of the escort service. It's not all sex. Old people who want to be seen with young women. And then you have somebody in the film who says, yeah, they want to be seen with young women, like in their underwear with their butts pointing up. I mean, this is staggering. It's uh, it's outrageous. And, you know, it's this conception that it's pretty woman. Prostitution, no big deal. I think these judges have no idea about the trauma and gravity of this crime. Just Can not a clue. The most dramatic and I think single most important part of a really important film that is brilliant, like uh, virtually everything you've touched, oh, you're the man. is these are not those kids are those people's kids. Oh. What comes across here is there are kids. I mean, is that not... Not only that, but since the film came out, we are hearing from affluent right. oil traders' daughters. This is sitting at the heart of the opioid crisis. You have a kid with depression? Watch out. You have a kid that's a foster child, adopted, LBGTQ youth? You are at risk. And so this, particularly with the Internet... A lot of the recruitment is happening in online chat rooms. And we just can't control every minute of every day of what our children are doing. But I think fundamentally what's exciting about this film is that these children and their mothers, it's like a modern-day Aaron Brockovich. Yeah, they are standing I, exactly up so. and they're saying, so we're going to stick it to the man. Well, they're the heroes. And they so are, are you, heroes. Mary. A wonderful film. Great work, as always. It's Thank great you, my to friend. see you. Film again is I Am Jane Doe. It's available now on iTunes, Google Play, and Amazon. And comes out on Netflix on May 26th. And by the way, 50% of all profits will be donated to organizations which serve Jane Doe children.